Hello again and welcome back. It's Professor Hendricks and today I'd like to talk to you about reading in a tab delimited file. Now tab delimited files are actually pretty common in bioinformatics. Off the top of my head I could probably name several file formats that are tab delimited, bed files, GFF files, um, GTF files, and I guess SAM files I think believe are tab delimited. So it's a common way of representing a lot of data when there's multi components or multiple components to your file. And why tab delimited and not space delimited or comma separated values? Well, in my opinion, tab delimited has the advantage of being both easily machine readable, um, like CSV files, but also more human readable than CSV files, in my opinion, because uh, tab delimited files, they line up with each other. The columns sort of line up when you view the file in a lot of uh, text editors, so that's kind of convenient. That's not always true if the lengths of the columns vary considerably, but for the most part, tab delimited files are fairly readable uh, to a person. And as an illustration, I basically went to Ensemble.org. Ensemble is uh, part of Embo, I believe, and it is um, basically an example uh, bed file as an illustration of a tab delimited file. I'll leave the link in the description to where I got this file, but I just called it bed example dot bed. And so dot bed is the file extension similar to dot FASTA. And so in this case, we can see that I have a collection of genomic coordinates and they are, have the chromosome, chromosome one, and also chromosome two and chromosome three and different positions. These could be different uh, gene regulatory regions I guess in theory these could be exons, but this isn't really the proper way to store exons of genes. There's a special way in an, in an enhanced bed file, which I won't go over now, I'll go over later on. But suffice to say, there are many different tab delimited files. The interesting thing about bed files is that the start and end positions for bed files are defined in the same way as a Python substring. And so the first position is zero based and the second position is zero based but not included in the actual substring or another way to look at the, that is that the end position is one based um, is another way to look at that maybe that's confusing but that's that's a valid way to look at this being zero based start one based end is the same thing as a zero based start and a non-inclusive zero based end so how would i go about reading this content and how would i store this content and so i'm going to go over that kind of example right now so the way I would do this is I would first define a Python script and I'll just call it use Emacs and say read bed file dot py and maybe I'll just leave it at that just leave it just leave it at that and what I'll do is I will like before I will uh, define a subroutine so I'll just say def read bed file and define the bed file as my input and what I want to do is I want to loop through the contents of that file similar to the way I loop through the contents of a FASTA file but the difference is, is that now my content is presented in multiple columns that are split by tabs and so let's just uh, I'm just going to define this subroutine first and get that out of the way so the first thing I might want to do is to find a file handle I'll just call it bed to illustrate that this is a bed file and I'll use open bed file. Now I could theoretically put the R here but it's optional you know just to show that you can leave it out I'll just go ahead and leave it out. And so now I've opened a file handle I need to loop through the contents of that file. The natural way to do it I think is to loop through line by line because each line contains that multi-tabbed information and basically what I'll do is I'll say for line in bed. And so now, if I were to print this out, so I, as I saw before, you could do line.strip. Printing it out is not really the most useful way to do it, but maybe I'll print it out just to show you what it looks like. And so go through here, and I guess I need to import the sys module. And I guess I might define a usage statement and usage 
and concatenate that with sys.rv, which is the name of the script itself, and then concatenate that with a string that reminds me of how to run the script. And I might say bed file. And I might say if len of sys.rv is not equal to, in this case, 2, because the zeroth term will be the script name, the oneth term will be the input file name, and so if it's not equal to 2, then it must be an error. So I'll print the usage statement, and I'll exit. And then I'll say that the bed file is going to be sys.rv of 1. And I would just need to read in the content, so I'll do read bed file. And I'm going to read bed file. It's going to take in the bed file. And okay, so I'll just call the output data. Keep it general. And that means I'm going to have to create something called data. And I think the best way to read this, this type of content might be with a dictionary. So I'll call it data, and I will define it to be a dictionary. So now at this point, just for an example, I'm going to go ahead and print the contents to the screen and show you what it looks like. So this file, we've already catted it to the screen, so it's probably going to look like that. So if I did Python read bed file, if I run this without uh, printing any arguments, it prints that usage statement and exits. And so it kind of reminds me, ah, it needs a bed file. So that's kind of a really useful thing to do. And so I had that bed example.bed. And if I do this, it prints the contents to the screen. And if I go back and look at how I did that, notice that I, I did the print line dot strip, and so it removed the new lines. So what I want to do now is I want to somehow split up those lines into the chromosome, the start, and the end positions. And so how, I'll just do that. I'll just define it. So chrome, comma, start, comma, end. And some people like to use the term seek name here. Technically, that's probably the better way to do it because it's not necessarily a chromosome. But you know what? I'm just going to call it a chromosome. And I'm going to call it line.strip. And so that's everything so far has been as, as before. But the difference is now I want to put something that's going to split those lines on tabs. And there's a built-in way to do that in Python, and that is with split. And so I can basically do something like this. And this should work as is, but I want to also, out of, an, out of a clarity, I guess, is to put a, a tab. And so this is indicated by backslash T. Now, the default behavior of split is to split on any spaces or tabs. And so it would have worked as before, but it would have also split on spaces. And though I don't expect there to be any spaces in my file, I'm going to go ahead and specify tabs anyway, just because I think that's the proper way to do it. And I already defined my dictionary data. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to do something very similar to the FASTA file example. And that is, I want to first check if the chromosome is in my dictionary. Because if it's not in my dictionary, then I want to make it a key to my dictionary. And secondly, I want to do something that I haven't really done before, and that is create a Dictionary of lists. A dictionary of lists is a new, well, it's a c combination of two other composite data types, lists and dictionaries, but it turns out to be really useful in a lot of contexts and a lot of bioinformatics and genomics contexts. And I think the natural way to, to use it is to have the key to be the chromosome name and have the value of the dictionary to be a list of tuples each tuple being the start and end pair of that line. So how I would do that is I would say, first I would say if chrome not in data. So if the chromosome is not currently in the data, I need to make it part of the data. I need to make it a valid key to this data dictionary. And so I would just do that by saying data of chrome. I need to define a value for it, which would be my initial value. And so I want that value to be a list. As I stated, I want to create a dictionary of lists, so I will initialize the value of this dictionary to be an empty list, and that should do it. So now every time I encounter that chromosome, I can just append that list. 
and I'll do that here. So I'll just do data of chrome. So if the chromosome is not in the data, it will make it a key to the data, make the value a list. And so I can just do append here and I can rest assured that if it ever gets to this line, it would have also checked to see whether the chromosome was already a valid key to that dictionary. And so I want to make this a tuple. I want to make this a list of tuples. So I'll put an extra set of parentheses to indicate the tuple. And then I'll put start, comma, end. And so this should do it. And if I return that data, and then I go back to my main subroutine, and so basically the file's been read here. So I could print out this data just to show you what it looks like. So I'll just basically do this, print data, save, close, clear my screen, and run this again. And you can see that I've created this dictionary. So we know it's a dictionary because it's got these curly braces. And you can see that there's a collection of colon-separated key-value pairs, each of which are separated by this comma. And so in other words, it's a comma-separated collection of colon-separated key-value pairs. So actually, this is the comma that separates each of these records. And so one of these records has the colon, and it's got the chromosome name, colon. And then you can see there's a list. <clears throat> Excuse me. This, this is the entire list for that chromosome 1. And it's a list of three tuples. Each tuple contains two positions, the start and end position. Now, here's an important point. What data type are these start and end positions? Pause for a second for you to think about that. And the answer is strings. In fact, everything that you read in from a file is going to be read in as a string. But if we want to do anything like add these positions or maybe subtract some sort of offset to these positions, we need to store them as int data types. And I recommend when you're converting data types, you want to do this at the beginning. You want to do this when you read it into the file. As soon as it gets into the file, convert it to the data type that you want. You don't want to have your script littered everywhere with various conversions to different data types. Just convert it at the very beginning once and for all so that you know for the rest of the script that it's going to be in the right data type. So I'm going to convert to ints. And I'll basically do this. Convert to ints for both of these. And save. And I'll print this out. So now I can see that I those quotes are now gone. And I have ints. And so these are the positions of these genomic regions, genomic uh, coordinates, if you will. And so that's, that's perfect, exactly what I wanted to do. And that's basically it. And so if you want, I could theoretically loop through this dictionary and sort, for example, those genomic positions. Um, I can do all sorts of stuff. So if I run it, I can see, are these sorted? Um, looks like they're probably sorted to begin with, but I could theoretically reverse sort them if you want to see an example. So I'll just go through here and I'll just show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through these contents and I'm going to sort them in descending order. Just for illustration, I'll say, say for Chrome in data. And so now I know that data of Chrome is a list. And so data of Chrome is a list. And I could theoretically do that list.sort because I know that it's a list and I know it's a list of tuples. So I've already introduced the idea of subroutines and the fact that I can do a key equals lambda. And so key equals lambda is a way of sorting by a particular key defined by this impromptu function that I'm going to define here using this lambda keyword. And that function that I want to do is I want to take in one of these tuples in this list of tuples, and I want to return the first term of that tuple. And so that's essentially how to do this. Lambda of x colon x bracket 0 will do that. It'll take in one of these tuples and return the 0 of the term or the term index by 0 in that tuple. And I also said I wanted to sort these in descending order, so I need to put reverse equals true. And so this will sort those lists. Each list in this dictionary of lists will be sorted. And I should now have done that. And so now I'll print it out again, data. And that's kind of an example of how to work with a list of tuples.
or a list of a, a dictionary of lists of tuples. I'll clear my screen and I'll print it out. And we can see if you look closely, this one's in 3530, this next one's 2363, and the last one is 1196, looking at the start positions. So it does appear to be sorted in descending order based on the start position of each of these genomic regions. And so with that, that basically concludes how to go about reading in a tab delimited file. And so I'll probably come back to more examples on this later on, but for now, I'll see you next time.